here trying to help you. I'm here to give you what it took me 30, 30 years in ministry to get. All right, giving thanks to the Father. Now, we gave you a lot of things that we have been thankful for, but this is how you pray. This is how Paul prayed. So let's go back to verse number 9, because we can see how he prayed. His whole prayer was giving thanks to the Father. In verse number 9, he began to tell us what he was praying for. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and the desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. So that's, some, that's what you can be thankful for. Thankful for the knowledge of God's will. Thankful for his wisdom. Thank you for his spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. Then he talked about strengthen with all might. See, these are things you can be thankful for, is to be strengthened. Now, the kingdom of God is Romans 14, 17. See, the kingdom of God, I'm just going to share with you, the kingdom of God, Romans 14, 17, is not meat and drink but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Well, each one of those words, righteousness, has to do with you being justified before God. See, that's the kingdom of God. That's in you, in your soul. God has made your soul righteous. Then he has given peace, which is the, the, the peace of God is what guards your heart. See, those three things, you'll hear them a little later on. And then uh, number three, joy in the Holy Ghost. See, those are three things, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Okay, that's the kingdom of God. All right, so here he says, strengthen with all might. Well, how are you strengthened? That's what the joy for. Tell somebody that's what the joy for. See, the joy of the Lord near my 8 and 10 is my strength. All right, then it says, strengthen with all might according to this glorious power under all patience and long suffering and joyfulness. Then it says, giving thanks to the Father which has made us meet to be partake of the inheritance of the saints in light. So that's one thing we've been thanking God for, for his inheritance. Then we are delivered, he delivered us from the power of darkness. That's something else you can thank God for. He translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. You can thank God for that. And all of these, all of these are out there on your podcast if you get the Door of Faith Christian Church podcast, okay? Then he says, in verse 14, we talked about last week, in whom we have redemption. That word redemption is forgiveness of sin. We have forgiveness of sin, watch this, through his blood. So that's why we talked about uh, verse 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. All right? So last week's message was God has forgiven you, receive it. So let's pray. Let's get right into today's message. Father, we thank you now for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your inheritance. We thank you for translating us in the kingdom of your dear Son. We thank you for delivering us from darkness. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. See, we got a lot to be thankful for now. But all these things that I'm talking about is how you develop your prayer life. Be thankful. All these things going on around you. Thank God for divine protection. See, everything going on around you but thank God for his divine protection. See, God is keeping you. 168, 169,000 people has died of this coronavirus disease, but God has kept you. See, that's what, you've got to rejoice. You've got to be thankful. Amen. We, we, we all wanted the end. Nobody wanted the end better than I do. I'm quite sure the Church of Israel wanted it to end, but God was doing something. We don't know what he's doing right now, but I know he's doing something just like he had the plagues in Egypt. God was bringing deliverance to his people. In the midst of that darkness, God had deliverance on his mind. So, Father, we bless you, we praise you, we appreciate you, we thank you for your way, your will, in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. All the grief that prayer said amen. Praise the Lord. All right, now, what we're going to talk about today, remember last week we started this series off, God has forgiven you, receive it. Now, I, I'm, get, I, I, I'm never going to get away from teaching grace because that's what this message, our ministry uh, is about, is about God's grace. So I want to 
piggy bank off that God has forgiven us, receive it, I want to bring us into the next part of the message because God has given us his grace, receive it. See, we get ready to get into some things. God has given us his grace, receive it. That's what you got to do. I'm going to show you in God's word that God has given us his grace. I want to say that to the camera out there. God has given us his grace, receive it. Coming to you, coming to you. God has already given us his grace. See, if God has already given us his grace, all I need to do is receive it. What has happened is we try to work, we try to be baptized in water to get it. We have, no, 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 you can't get grace that way. God has given us his grace. You can do only one thing is receive it. That word receive means to believe. That word means to, to receive it into your heart. But I'm going to show you the reason why people can't receive grace. Listen to me. They're not saved. Now that's what I'm going to deal with today. The reason why people cannot receive God's grace, they don't have a new heart. They're not saved. See, that's why I taught you Romans 12 and 1 uh, and 2 and 3, because if you don't get a new heart, a new spirit, a new creation, you can't now receive the grace of God. You, if, until you receive God's forgiveness, you cannot receive God's inheritance. Let's go back there. Let's go back to Acts, and let's show you that Acts chapter 26. See, all this, all this stuff here is just things that God has taught me about so importance of being born again. That's why you hear me teach so much about you need a new life in Christ. You, it's a must. Jesus told the disciples in Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these other things shall be added. See, what was the kingdom? Christ. That's why Romans 8, 32 said, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him, with Christ, with him, once you get Christ, now God freely give you all things. He cannot give you all things if you don't already have Christ. See, when God gave you his son, he gave you a new heart. When God gave you his son, he gave you a new spirit. He gave you a new mind. He made all things new. So if you don't have a new heart, you have nowhere to put what God want to give you. Just think about it. The only reason this water is in this cup is because it would hold it. If you cut holes in the cup, it won't hold the water. And that's what's wrong with people's hearts. You need to have a new heart. You need a new spirit. You need a new mind before you can hold, contain the things of the spirit. So that's what we want to look at today. We want to, we want to this is really going to be a blessing. I, 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 if you can grasp this, you can grasp the importance of, the, of being saved. You can grasp it, okay? Now, Acts chapter number 26 and verse 18, this was Paul's mission. Open their eyes. Turn them from darkness to light. Now, he's going to do that with the word. Then he said, turn them from the power of Satan, which was ignorance, under God. Turn them from the power of Satan. Turn them from death to life. Turn them from darkness to light. See, that was his responsibility. Turn them from ignorance to knowledge. What? That they may receive. See, once they are turned to God, now they can receive, number one, forgiveness of sins. Now, listen how he told you you're going to get forgiveness of sins. See, I don't care what your religion says. I don't care what you teach at your church. What did he tell the Apostle Paul who wrote the New Testament? He said, you're going to receive forgiveness of sin. Now, you got to understand, that's why my message is, 
God has given us his grace, receive it. Now God just says to Paul, open their eyes, turn them from darkness to light, turn them from the power of darkness to, to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins, and yet people come out and tell you, well, you got to be baptized in water in Jesus' name to, to receive forgiveness of sins. You see, what they, where are they teaching you at? In the book of Acts, the second chapter, or Matthew chapter 3, or Luke chapter 3. Listen, you in the new covenant now. You're under grace now. Let me, let me show you that. Let me show you that uh, in a moment here. But watch what it says. Open your eyes. Turn them from darkness to light. Turn them from the power of Satan to God. That they may receive forgiveness of sin. Watch this. And an inheritance. See, once they receive the forgiveness of sin, then they can get the inheritance among them who are sanctified, which was the Jews or uh, the saints of God. All right. Now, that's what you have to understand. But people don't want that. They still want to go back to the book of Acts, repent, be baptized. Have it. Listen, you're not even in grace yet. The first book the Apostle Paul wrote was the book of Romans. That's what the order of the Holy Spirit now. Let me put it that way. Now, we know there were older books than Romans. But I'm talking about Paul, God's order because that is the book of doctrine. Now, we know we're not dumb. We know there are some books that are older than that that Paul wrote, but the Holy Ghost put them in his order, the book of Romans. So when, you, when you're trying to preach to me Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you're only giving me the Old Testament mysteries, the gospel of the kingdom. You haven't gotten the grace yet. That's what you must understand. So that's why you understand God's word is good, it's acceptable, and it's perfect. Well, how do you know that? The law is good. The gospel of the kingdom is acceptable. And then when you get to the gospel of grace, it's perfect. Because that's who Christ is. And God wants you to know the perfect will of God. Amen? All right, now, his teaching today, part three, God has given us his grace, receive it. All right? Let, let me show you Romans, Romans chapter 5, verse 17. Look at Romans. My point is you can only receive the grace of God. Now, you can write down this word grace because there's three words that I'm going to use. Grace is unmerited favor. I want somebody to put that out there for, for everybody to catch up with you. Grace is unmerited favor. What does that mean, Pastor. Grace is undeserved. Just think about it. Grace is unearned. You can't earn grace. You cannot earn grace. Grace is unmerited. It's unearned. You can't earn it. See, you don't have enough money to buy it. You can't purchase it. And it's undeserved. And yet God asks you to do one thing, is receive it. Now, to receive the grace of God, you're going to have to first receive God's Son, the Holy Spirit, because you have to have a new heart. That's why I gave you Romans. Look at Romans chapter 5. Then we go to Romans 12. Romans 5 and verse 17. If by one man our fist death reign by one, much more they was received. What do they receive? A bundle of grace. Now, you can't receive. This is why, you know, I see people and they're like, well, I just can't understand it. I just can't receive that. Now, the problem is you do not have the Holy Spirit. That's your problem. You make all those excuses to hold on to your doctrine. You know why you want to hold on to the Old Testament? Because it's, it's without the Spirit. You can learn the Old Testament, don't drop the cup, without the Holy Spirit. See, you got a whole lot of folk who can quote scriptures. But they're all whole Old Testament scriptures. 
But when you come over into the new covenant, you got to have the Holy Ghost to get this. Because the Holy Ghost is a revealed word. The Old Testament is stories. Jonah in the, Jonah in the, in the bed of the whale. Uh, Daniel in the lion. See, people can preach that. They can wear all back. Yeah, Daniel this and the Hebrew boy. The stories. But when you come in the new covenant, you got to have the, the Holy Ghost. I'm going to show you that in a moment in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. You got to have the Holy Ghost. Here in Romans chapter 5, watch what it said in verse 17. For if by one man offense, death reigned by one, much more, they which receive, one word, receive, abundant of grace, receive the gift of righteousness. See, you need to receive abundant of grace. You need to receive the gift of righteousness. God say you are reigning in life by one, Jesus Christ. Once again, we're on part three. God has given us his grace. Receive it. That's what you got to do. He already gave us his grace. I'm going to show you scripture after scripture after scripture. Let's go to Romans chapter 12. I forgot that. Romans chapter 12. We taught this. Verse 1 said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice. Watch this. Holy, acceptable, and perfect. Watch what it says. Present your body as a living sacrifice, acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. Watch this. Acceptable. Present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, Look, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world. Be transformed. Be transformed. How are you going to be transformed, Pastor? We gave you that. We did a teaching on that. Got on the podcast. Be translated. Be transformed into the kingdom of God, dear son. How are you going to do it? By the renewing of your mind. You got to become a new creation in Christ. You cannot put new wine in the old wineskins. Let me just tell somebody out there. Listen. You cannot put new wine in the old wineskins. See, that's the heart. You can't put the Holy Ghost into an old heart. You can't sew new clothes to old clothes. That's what Jesus talked about. Why? Because the new would pull away from the old. You got to have a new heart if you want the new wine. And the new wine is the Holy Spirit. All right? So watch, watch what it says in verse 3. Verse 2 first. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that number one good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Well, once you get to grace, this is God's perfect will. That's what he's trying to bring. The law is good. The Bible told you the law is good. The gospel of the kingdom was acceptable. But the gospel of Christ is God's perfect will. Now watch what he says in verse 3. I say through the grace. Watch what he says. I say through the grace given to me. God's grace is given. I know you've been... T talking about water baptism for self. You've been deceived. Now you can get out of that. You can just drop that and receive the grace of God and start a new life. You cannot be saved by water baptism. To hold on to your way of thinking, you're going to die and go to hell. I'm offering you eternal life. I'm offering you the grace of God. Receive it. God has given to us, God has given us his grace, receive it. Right here, Romans 12, 3, here it is. For I say through the grace given to me, Paul said to every man that's among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. 
God has given to every man the measure of faith. How am I going to get it? You got to receive it. Everything you get in the new covenant must be received by your spirit. Let me show you that in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Everything in the new covenant. If you're going to get it, you got to receive it with your spirit. you got to have the Holy Spirit. And you can't get the Holy Spirit through water baptism. You've been deceived. You know, somebody just tells me every Sunday I've been deceived. Somewhere down the line, I've been, maybe this guy knows what he's talking about. Man, I'm on the world wide web telling you if you believe you're saved by water baptism, you have been deceived. This is not a game. Why do you think we got the cross here? Why do you think you got a cross on your church? Cross on your neck. Why do you think they put a cross on that church? Some people got a cross in their background. We got another one back there. We got one in a gym, you know, Jim over there. We got crosses all over the church. Why you think we got a cross? Because Christ died on the cross to save your soul from hell. He poured out his blood for your salvation. And you think you're going to get away just with water baptism for your salvation? No, that's not going to happen. God gave his son to save you. Don't be deceived. Receive it. All right, now, Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 6. Paul says, Howbeit we speak the wisdom of God among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the prince of this world that come to know. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world to our glory. Watch this. Which none of the princes of this world knew. Why they didn't know it? Why all those Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes did not know this. They did not have a new heart. They did not have the Holy Spirit. That's why they didn't know it. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, eye has not seen, so you can't get this with your physical eye, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Now, why would he say, I hadn't seen, ear hadn't heard, neither have been into the heart of man? Because man ha does not have the heart of God if he's not saved. So it can't go into his heart. He has nowhere to hold anything. It's just like an empty vessel. That's what he talk about, empty vessels and empty pictures. God got to give you a new heart. Then he talks about in verse number nine, but God has prepared but God prepared for them that love him. Which thing God prepared for them that love him. So God has a lot of things for them that love him, but you got to have a new heart. Then he, Paul going to tell you, but God revealed them unto us by his spirit. Well, what did God reveal to Paul by his spirit? Where? That's the question. Where did God reveal to Paul? Where did he reveal it at? Where's revelation knowledge? Let, let me show you. Hold your finger right there. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's go to Galatia. We'll be right back. Galatia chapter number 1. And let's start off with verse 11. We'll go back to 1 Corinthians 2. Galatia chapter 1 verse 11. Paul says, I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Here we go. Here's the word. For neither received it. Wait, wait, hold it, hold it, hold it. I neither received it. Wait a minute. Paul had to receive the gospel grace. Well, if he did not have a new heart, he could not have received it. Now, if you had to come to Paul before he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, he didn't receive it, did he? He killed the believers. Why? He had not received the grace. Once he received God's grace, he stopped killing the believers and started ministering to them because now he's one of them. 
Amen. But he had to receive. Paul says, I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. I neither received it. Watch well, what he says. I didn't receive it of man, neither was I taught it. But I received it by the revelation of Jesus Christ. How did he receive it? By the revelation of Jesus Christ. Well, if he did not have the Holy Spirit, he could not have received it. Let, let, me, let me just keep saying it over and over. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you cannot receive the revelation of Jesus Christ. I met so many people who hear me and hear me minister, and they, it turns them off. And they think, I have a problem. No, you just cannot understand, or you do not have a heart, so God can put it in. You don't have the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you right now, you don't have the Holy Spirit. I know I went through this process in my life. I was studying the Word of God all the time. I bought the whole Bible on cassette tape for my wife in the bathroom every day, seven days a week. In the Word, in the Word, in the Word, in the Word, in the Word. And you know what? As fast as it was coming in, it was going out. What was going on? I had not done the first things first. I had to get a new heart. You know, it's just like you going into the store and you got a bag, but it got a bottom out of it. And you just walk in the aisleways, putting stuff in your basket. You just walk in the aisleways, putting stuff in your basket. And you get to the counter and you say, it's nothing in my basket. Well, why nothing is in your basket? You got a hole in the bottom. You got an old basket. You got an old basket. That's what happened with people's old hearts. They keep putting stuff in the heart. They keep putting it in there. Nothing stays. They got the tape play on all day long, all day in the world, but it's nothing there. Because they have no where to put it. You got to have a new heart. I'm going to show it to you in the Word of God. You got to have a new heart. You got to have somewhere to put this new word. Now, Paul says in Galatians chapter 1 and verse number 13, You heard of my conversation time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equal and my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the tradition of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, called me, watch this, by his grace, watch this, to reveal his son, watch this, in me. Well, where did God reveal Christ to Paul at? Don't drop your cup. In his heart. In his heart. God have to reveal Christ to you in your heart. He must be in your heart. See, people want God to reveal Christ to them, but they want it to be with the head. No, 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 no. Once you get Christ in your heart, then God will reveal him to you. This is, this is a spiritual principle. Watch this. Verse 15 again, Galatians 1, 15. Well, when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb, called me by his grace, to reveal his son, watch this, in me, that I may preach him among the heathens. Wait a minute. If God revealed his son in Paul's heart, now he can preach Christ with his heart, right? Where is life? In the heart. Where's the Holy Spirit? Where's Christ? Where's faith? Where's the truth? Where's all of God's riches? God puts him in the heart of man. When a man wasn't saved, his treasure was in his heart. When a man gets saved, God's treasure is kept in your heart. The heart is the subconscious. 
The heart is the subconscious. You want to write that down. You want to write that down. The heart is the subconscious. That's where God keeps your storage. Everything God keeps you, everything God gives you that you kept over the years from a little child is because they're in your heart. Not your mind. You can have things on your mind today and not on your mind tomorrow. See, your mind can be where things are appetites. You know, just like you go in a store and you see a whole lot of things in the store, oh, you mind, you're looking at all of them. But when you walk out of there and go home, can't hardly remember what you've seen. But once you put it in your heart, bring it home, you kept it. You can remember that. And so you have to understand, the heart is where God keeps you. Store, store, store all of your data in the heart. Your experiences. The word of God, Christ. Because you have a new heart. And I'm going to show you the Holy Ghost watches over your heart by the spirit of peace. That's very important because that's your treasure. All right. But that, then there's a mind. I want you to just do three things. Let, let's, show you how, let's show you how you operate. We're going to use the camera in front of me. We're going to show you how you operate. Now, if you, if you have a baby born in a belly, then you have three things where you're beginning at. You're going to start out with the heart, then the brain, then the spinal cord. Say that with me together. The heart. The brain, the spinal cord. Now, why is that? Because the heart here, brain here, connects with the spinal cord. That's what you're going to see. And now that is going to develop into the child and the baby. The heart, the brain, the spinal cord. Everything else will come off of that. All the veins, all of the ribs and everything will grow out of the spinal cord. All right. Now, if you can remember those three things, brain, say it one more time, brain. You're going to name three things. Brain, heart, spinal cord. Now, you don't, that's natural. Now, if you can remember that natural with a baby, now let's go spiritual. And you want to say not brain, but mind. You're going to have the heart but not the one that pumped blood. See? And now you want to look at your mind and say, conscious. Come on, just say it with me. Put your hand on your head and say, mind is my conscience. All right? That's why I had to have a new mind. But then I have a new heart. That new heart is subconscious. So everything that I hear with my mind, I don't want to keep, I get rid of it. It's waste. But if I want to keep it, it goes down to the heart and store. It's storage. But how does it get there? Just like the baby has the heart, the brain, the spinal cord, that what leads from the brain to the heart is the Holy Ghost. So when you get something in your mind that God wants you to keep, it goes to your heart. How does it get there? By the Holy Ghost. Can't you see this? Can't you see that? You got the mind, the heart, but the Holy Ghost is a connector. So what happens if a man don't have the Holy Spirit? What happens if you don't have a spinal cord? See, that's why it is so important when the doctor tell you, you got a high blood pressure. Because he's trying to keep you from blowing your brain out or disrupting something in your spinal cord. So he's telling you, that's why you begin to hear headaches and stuff. Your, body, your, body, your heart is telling you here that it's too much pressure on me. I got to release some up to you. So you have to listen to your body, speak to you. 
All right, but just take those three things. Mind is conscious. Heart is subconscious. Subconscious is what everything is kept. That's your database, okay? Now, let's take that in mind. Now, let's go back and show you some things. Let's go to, these, let's go to Ezekiel. Let me, finish, let me finish 1 Corinthians 2 first. Then we go to Ezekiel. All right, now I'm going to get into this because I'm going to show you how you, the grace of God is given to you and you can only receive it. But what happens is people don't have a new heart. So they don't have anywhere to put the grace. So because they don't have anywhere to put the grace, they can't keep it. They're hearing, this, hearing the same message I'm hearing. Or they're hearing the same message, you, but you, don't, can't, can't, you can't put it nowhere because you don't have a new heart. Pastors of churches, people are pastoring churches, don't have a new heart. You'd be surprised how many people that do not have a new heart. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. This is what Paul was talking about in verse number 10. 1 Corinthians, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. Well, where is his spirit at? See? So once, once the wisdom comes into the mind, it goes to the heart. God has revealed to you to keep that or he will kick it out. But God has revealed them to us by His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Watch what it says. What man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? See, the Spirit of God is in you. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. So everything comes in you, the Spirit of God knows it. And if He does not want, if it's not good for you, you'll kick it out. In verse number 12, now we have received. Once again, how did you get it? You received it. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. We have received what? The spirit which is of God. Why did you receive the Holy Spirit? You have a mind, you have a heart, but you have to have, if I can use the word, a cord to reach from the mind to the heart. So what you got in your mind can go back and forward to the heart, to the mind, to the heart, to the mind. So when the Holy Ghost speaks, he speaks out of your heart to your mind. That's how you get information. That's what you're going to keep. All right, verse 12 says, now we receive not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the thing that are freely given to us of God. So God gives us everything. Look, look, at, look at Romans 8.32. I quoted this earlier, but I'm going to show it to you. Romans chapter 8, verse 32 says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely, watch this, freely, Give us all things. Look at Ephesians 1 and 3. God has given us all things. Ephesians 1 and 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Where are they? In Christ. Where is Christ? In you. When you say, well, what does he live? He dwells in our hearts by faith. I need that scripture. Christ dwells in our heart by faith. Watch this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all, not some, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. What an awesome God we serve. All right? So God gave us Christ. Christ lives in the heart. In Christ is all the riches and the treasure of God, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, all is in the heart. So in Ephesians, okay, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 17. Now I'm going to start reading the verse before that because it says, Verse 14 says, 
For this cause, Paul says, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why does he keep saying it? Because everything you get comes from the Father. The word Father means source, it means provider. We're going to look at that a little later on in this teaching. Of whom the whole family of heaven and earth is named, that, you, that he, the Father, will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened, watch this, with might, watch this, by his Spirit, where? Where do God want you to be strengthened? By his might in the inner man. What's the inner man? It's the heart, the soul of man. In the heart of the soul, that's what this heart called. It's the heart of the soul. It's in the soul, but it's the heart of the soul. Just like in the soul, you have a will. In the soul, you have a mind. Oh, that's a part of your soul. So you have to know how you operate. All right? To be strengthened, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Now, if I'm going to be strengthened according to the riches of his glory, then where are the riches of his glory? Don't drop the cup. Let me show it to you. Don't drop the cup. That you might be strengthened by his spirit in the inner man. But it's according to the riches of his glory. Now, when you talk about the riches of his glory, you're talking about Philippians 4 and 19. Hold your finger right there. Back up to Philippians 4 and 19. See, you, talk, you have to know your Bible. Philippians 4 and 19, you go for, first book forward, I'm sorry. For, for, Philippians 4 and 19, before you get to call us. Philippians 4 and verse 19. Watch what it says. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. How are you going to supply them? He's going to supply them by Christ Jesus. So if God supplies all of my need by Christ Jesus, but it's according to his riches and glory. Watch that verse again, Ephesians 3 and verse 16, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory. See, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. So that's why you have to know that Christ is God's riches and glory. To be strengthened with might by his spirit, well, in the inner man, that's in your heart. And then verse 17 says that Christ may dwell in your heart. Now he's going to tell you. Where does Christ live? In your heart. That Christ may live in your heart by faith and that you may be rooted and grounded in love. See, that's why if you don't have love in the heart, that's why it doesn't matter. You can't love nobody with the love that you're using because it's not coming from the heart. See, it's not coming from God. Let me put it that way. Christ is in the heart. When you love people from the heart, then you, Christ's anointing is on your love. Your love is real. And if it's not, it's coming out of an old heart and it's dead. Can't help nobody. Oh, this is so good to me. All right, now let's get to work because I got some things open here. And I want to begin to take you into, into some things. Uh, well, well let, let's, show you, let's show you how this happened. Go to Romans. Let me, let, me, let me just, Romans chapter 15. Give you a couple of these before we get in the West. Romans chapter 15. Now, in Romans chapter 15, there's a verse, verse 13. Now, I'm going to show you how that verse 13 is going to connect to Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians 2, 13 and 14. Let's show you some verses how they work together. Now, here in Romans 15, 13, watch what you hear. Now the God of hope fear you with all joy. What does he mean, fill you with all joy? Remember Romans 14, 17, the kingdom of God, not meat and drink, but righteous, peace, and joy, right? So he's talking about the kingdom, which is Christ. Now the God of hope fill you with Christ, with all joy, 
and peace. That's the kingdom, see? But how are you going to do it? In believing. How does God fill you with all joy and peace? In believing. Now, where is believing? Hold, hold right there. See, this Bible got everything. You don't have to do them but just walk these pages. Romans 10 and 10. Let me show you what believe in it. For with the heart, man believe it. Wait a minute. If he's going to fill your heart in believing, then what do that tell you? What's happened if a man don't have a new heart? He can't believe. Why is a man called a sinner? Why is he called a sinner? Why are you called saved? Why somebody say you saved? Only one reason. What do you have different than a man that's not saved? He has an old heart, an old spirit. He's still in Adam, and he cannot believe. He can't believe God. He don't have a new heart. See, God, if God gave him faith, he wouldn't have any way to put it. Got to have a new heart. God put faith, he put his son Christ in your heart. He give you a new heart. He give you a new spirit, which is Christ. Now you have a new heart. You are a new man. You are a new creature. So here, Romans 15, 13 says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. In believing. Well, you, why? Because you believe with your heart. So that man that do not have a new heart cannot believe God. I mean, he had head knowledge, but he doesn't have any faith. Faith must come out the heart. Uh, let, let's show you some, some others because th this, is, this is really good to me here. Now, God gave Paul the revelation. I'm going to be looking at all of that. But I've got to go back and show you a couple of things. Let's go back to Ezekiel. Let's go back a couple of Old Testament. Ezekiel chapter 11. Ezekiel chapter 11. Matter of fact, uh, I'm, I'll go back to Jeremiah. Let's go back to Jeremiah 17 first. I, you know, some things I'm not wanting to get on right now because I've got to keep it simple because I want to show you that God has given us his grace to receive it. But you, gotta, you can't receive it unless you got a new heart. Now, Jeremiah 17 and verse 10 says, The Lord searches the heart. Now, why does God search the heart? Watch that. Let me show you another. We come right back here. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 7. I know I'm giving you a lot of word. 1 Samuel 16 and 7. Why does God search the heart? That's why I'm asking you. Well, if, the, if, if, if my database was the heart and God want to find out who I really am, what I really believe, do I really trust in him, where would he look? He would look at my heart. Because where is faith in the heart? Where is trust in the heart? Where do I keep my Wisdom, knowledge, understand. Where's Christ? All that's in the heart. So why do you think God looks in the heart? Because if you don't have nothing in your heart, you can't worship God. See, that's why God, I'm going to show you in a minute, these people honor me with their mouth. Oh, they praise me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. See, they're not doing it out of the heart. That's why John 4, 24 said, God the Spirit, and they that worship him must worship him. Watch this. In spirit, well, where's the spirit? In your heart. In truth, where's truth? In the heart. You can't worship God from the heart if Christ is not in the heart. 
Just going through a lot of rhetoric. Just going through a lot of rhetoric. You got to understand, you got to stop playing church and become the church. Let me say it again. You have to stop playing church and become the church. 1 Samuel 16 and 9. God wanted a king. And here his prophet Samuel is going to anoint the king. Watch what God is going to tell this young man. But the Lord said to Samuel, look not on his countenance. That's on the outside. How did they get the first king? I want to see how well you know your Bible. How did they get the first king? King Saul. They got him because he was tall and handsome. Watch what God is going to say. Don't make the same mistake you made before. See, you got to understand this. You might be out there saying, man, I'm getting ready to find me a man. Or... Listen. Listen to this verse. <laughs> the Lord said to Samuel, look not on his countenance. Oh, he's tall, handsome, he's fine, child. But watch what it says. Don't look on his countenance. Don't look on his height. Don't look at the height of his statues because I have refused him. I have refused him. Watch what God says. The Lord sees not as man see it. Man looketh on the outward appearance. This is what happens when a person's not saved. You know where in the world you'd have chose Pastor and Sister Crump to pass this church because you look on the outward appearance. And I would not have made it. But thanks be to God. He does not look on the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. Look at that right there. But the Lord looketh on the heart. Now that's an awesome verse. When God want to know you, he looks at your heart. That's a mighty word right there. Look at 1 King. 1 King 8.39. Let me give you one more. 1 King chapter 8 and verse number 39. 1 King 8, 39. Then hear thy in heaven. Okay, this, this man is praying here, right? Solomon is praying. He said, look, hear thy in heaven, thy dwelling place. Forgive and do and give to every man according to his way, whose heart thou knoweth. That's what Solomon told God. Whose heart thou knoweth. For thou, even thou only, knoweth the heart of the children of men. You know the hearts of men. See, when you go out here and begin to do things for God, you got to understand, God knows your heart. First Chronicles 28 and 9. First Chronicles 28 and 9. God knows your heart. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy fathers and serve him. Watch what he told him, with a perfect heart. Serve me with a perfect heart. What did God tell Solomon? For, what did God tell Solomon? I'm going to go right back there. Well, see, when you study Solomon's life, God told Solomon something. First Kings, let me go back there. I'm going to show you something. First Kings chapter 11. And we are showing you now 1 Chronicles 28 and 9. I'm just marking my Bible. 1 Chronicles 28 and 9. Watch what God's going to say. And then when I go to 1 first, first Kings 11 and verse 1, watch what God says in 1 Kings 11 and 1. But King Solomon loved many strange women. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said to the children of Israel, you shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you. Watch this. Surely they will turn away your heart after their God. 
They will turn away their heart. They will turn away your heart after their gods. And the Bible said, and Solomon claimed to these in love. God told him, they're going to turn your heart away from me, son. And that's what happened with Solomon. So, so when the Bible said, and thou, 1 Chronicles 28 and 9, he said, and thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy fathers. Know him. Get to know him, brother. Serve him, number two. He told him and know him. Serve him with a perfect heart. Serve him with a willing mind. The Lord searches all hearts and understanding the imagination of the thoughts. He searches all hearts and he knows the imagination of the heart. He knows what's in your mind. He knows what's in your heart. If you seek him, he will be found on thee. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. That's what God told Solomon. And the Bible says, Solomon loved many strange women. They turned his heart from God. Since something God don't want you to have, let me just say this to you. Something God don't want you to have right now. He wants your love to be pure to him. Whatever God got for you will come to you. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 17, 10. The Lord searches the hearts. I try to reins. Even to give every man according his way. That's how it worked in the old covenant. God gave you according your ways. According your works, according to the fruit of your doing. That's how God rewarded man in the old covenant. Ezekiel chapter number 11. That's where I am. Got enough time to do one. Ezekiel 11 and verse 19 and 20. We're going to pray. I will give them one heart. I will put a new spirit within you. I will take the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. Listen, he said, I'm going to give you a new heart. You read that out of the, I'm going to read it out of the, out of the good news. God said, I'm going to give you a new heart. See, that's what you have to have. And that's what happened with people. They want to do things for God, but they don't have a new heart. You can't love everybody. You can't forgive everybody. If you got a new heart, you can. Good news says, verse 19, Ezekiel eleven nineteen. 19. I will give them a new heart. I will give them a new mind. Well, how are you going to give you a new heart and a new mind? New heart, your database. That's where all your storage is. That's where you believe God. That's where Christ lives in your heart. But then, how does stuff get to your heart? It must come through your mind. But so God said, He's going to give you a new mind. He said, I will take away their stubborn heart of stone, and I give them an obedient heart. Then they will keep my laws faithfully and obey all of my commands they'll be my people i'll be their god if that happens so the key is that's what has to happen so when you want god to to do something you're going to have to give god your heart well my time is up already i thank you for studying the word of the lord with me this morning uh let's get right here in the first corinthians chapter number 15 because you got to have a new heart you got to get your faith you got to believe God, you're going to need the cross. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1, Brother, I declare to you the gospel, the cross, which I preach to you, which also you have received. There it would again. And where you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preach to you. He said, I preach to you the cross. Unless you have believed in vain, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. How Christ died for our sin, receive it. According to the description, he was buried and God raised him from the dead. You need to receive it. If you do that, you'll have eternal life. God will give you the Holy Spirit. My time is up.